All right, today I want to take a moment to talk about the PCA standard P14, which identifies the prep levels that go into uh, preparing a, a properly painted surface. The reason that this is relevant is both um, operational and part of the sales process, okay? It's important for your company to understand the breakdown of the different prep levels. Um, there are a, a lot of people who they'll say things like, Oh, this was a level five finish and um th that's you know th th they they just think that that means like really high quality okay it's a little more nuanced than that and we're going to get into it so first where do these industry standards um live well they they live with the pca the painting contractors association which is our only trade association in the industry and they hold the industry standards and these industry standards will protect you in the event of a customer who um, has a, a dispute regarding the um, inspection and um, acceptance of the surface. And so it's really important to understand these levels. And it's also important to be able to communicate it to your crew so that they know how uh, how hard they need to work or not, not, not hard, but just so that they understand how far they need to go with, with the prep. They, you also need to understand it from a sales perspective because the higher expectations that a customer has the more money they need to be willing to pay to, to get the work at that level. And so we're gonna use the, the PCA standards here, P14, in both our sales process and in helping our crew understand the scope of work. So, so let's, let's talk about these levels. So there are five levels, okay? And um, I have them on the screen here. Don't worry about reading them uh, you know, as I speak, just listen to me. Um, and I'll provide um, you know, a, 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 a document that will showcase, um, that will highlight these uh, uh, these levels, okay? So the first level, it's basic prep. That's what it's called. It's just basic, right? Level one, all we're gonna do is we're gonna clean and paint the surface, okay? That's ensuring that the surface is clean enough to paint. It doesn't mean that you have to wash the walls, every wall. Um, so most of the time, a, a dusting is gonna be okay, um, but if there is, you know, accumulation if there's grease if there is any type of um, you know artifact on the surface of the wall that is going to compromise the integrity of the uh, of the adhesion then we want to clean that up before we paint okay uh, we don't want any defects um, that aren't already a part of the surface to to be in our paint the main goal here of basic prep is that we are assuring that our coating is going to adhere. This does not mean that previous layers of, of paint, it doesn't mean that they're going to adhere. There could still be uh, failure, adhesion failure, on previous layers of paint. So, uh, you know, we're, we're just, it's, we're not doing much on, on level one. We're not filling holes, not really patching, not really sanding. You're just cleaning and then painting. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, when would this ever be appropriate? appropriate? Uh, it rarely is. It's rarely appropriate in a, in a person's home. Um, what, where it might be appropriate is if you uh, have a deal with a, with a general contractor and it's, a, it's new construction, new drywall, um, and you understand and they understand that the drywallers are uh, responsible for um, any type of uh, hole or damage to the wall you are just painting right that's that's really you know one of the few circumstances where a level one would make sense um, a level one would also maybe make sense in um, you know budget apartment turnovers that kind of work if, if you do that um, you know there there are apartment complexes that they are they are prioritizing the the cleanliness of the of the paint job over the the quality of the preparation, and so it may be appropriate there, but it's rarely appropriate in any type of uh, repaint situation or um, you know medium to, to high end work. Uh, so so perhaps needless to say, I don't sell a ton of level one uh, stuff. Now, there are instances where if the, uh, let's, say, let's say, for example, you're, you're working with a new homeowner who just purchased a home and the previous homeowners had it painted 
but they just want uh, new colors. They don't have any holes in the walls. There are no defects. It's a relatively new home. Uh, overall looks pretty good and really you just have to paint that's all then maybe a level one is, is actually appropriate there uh, there might be ceilings where you don't have to do any prep to those ceilings other than dusting and you could just put a coat of paint on there's no cracks there's no you know blemishes there's no issues with the ceilings whatsoever and all you have to do is paint maybe a level one is appropriate for, for there uh, and then, and then I would say that's the same, you know, for, for trim. A lot of times you'll go into a house where, uh, you know, there's the, the caulking hasn't cracked. It's in relatively decent shape. It's just a couple scuffs. Uh, all we need to do is clean it up. If you want to get into price customization, that's a place where you can, you can do it. You can decrease the, the level of prep on things like, um, your ceilings and your, and your trim, if that makes sense, and then offer a higher level of prep on your walls and that can customize your uh, your bid to make it more uh, affordable for the customer um, and then when you communicate the level of prep to your crew as you can imagine if, if, if they say if the work order says level one prep on ceilings and trim then that means they are going to dust stuff off and then they're just gonna paint no prep work needed right no no patching no filling no anything needed just just go ahead and paint Level two is a standard prep. This is where we're filling obvious holes and small defects, but we're not really striving for perfection. Now, from a sales perspective, this one is kind of important, especially if you're in, in a repaint, right? Whether it's commercial or residential. This is where, where I think um, we have, we put our entry point at, you know, a lot of the jobs that we bid out, we say, we're gonna bid this out at standard prep um, that's going to make it affordable to you, but if you are the kind of person that really has an eye for detail, you're going to notice the small things. Um, you want, uh, you know, you want to pay extra money to have us spend the time to go the distance and get things perfectly smooth. Then you might want to upgrade your prep level, right? And so with the standard prep, again, we're just filling the obvious holes and small defects. The, the, P, uh, the standards themselves go into greater depth of, of what this means, even down to like how deep of a hole are we going to fill? You know, how many, how many millimeters is this hole? Uh, when I'm communicating it to the customer, what I'll do is I'll, I'll look at the, uh, the wall and I'll look for a, a section of wall that is in relatively good condition. It might have a, a couple of like, yeah, you can kind of see underneath. Maybe there's the beginning immersion of a of a of a nail pop. Um, you know, maybe there was a, a tiny you know kind of uh, fleck that got into the paint before when they had painted. Just a, such a small little thing, and I might point those things out and say, um, you know, this kind of thing isn't really going to be covered by a level two. If, if you see those things and you, you know, you really want us to knock those down, sand them down, make it smooth, then you might be more interested in a level three. Because um, again, we're just talking about the most obvious things. And so when I'm in a sales situation, what I might do with a customer is I might, you know, go over to a section wall and I'll just say, okay, Mr. Customer, look at the wall. What defects do you see that you would want us to fix and then I'll just patiently wait until they scan the wall and look at it and decide okay this is you know I want this done I want that done you know this needs to be fixed and and I kind of and I pay attention to their attention to detail if I am seeing more things than they are seeing then I know that you know their standard of, of of detail isn't as high as mine right and and that's okay now that's an opportunity to have a conversation because then you can say okay well did you see this or this or this and you start pointing out and identifying the things that you know could use some attention and if they don't see those things or they say something like um, no that doesn't bother me uh, you know I know then then you can say okay well i think that a level two uh prep level would be would be suitable you know we're not striving for for perfection that allows us to get some process gains on our end 
the process gain is where you you're able to kind of speed up in the process you're get, able to gain efficiencies and um, and and so because of that you can you can you know rely on this project going smooth and quickly and not taking as long that allows you to customize the bid so that you're not you know pricing for the Taj Mahal now if they come back to you and they say you know what yeah I see all those things and I really want them I, I really want them taken care of now we're talking about either a level three or a level four prep and so this is just giving more attention level three is a superior prep it's more attention to filling holes uh, sanding the surfaces and achieving a uniform texture and avoiding flashing so you're gonna have to go the distance if I see nail pops and I see peeling tape and I see you know more severe wall damage right and there's this there's this thing called uh, DSD the degree of surface degradation and that also has levels okay it has levels 0 through 4 and basically it's on a scale of 0 to 4 of how bad are these walls so zero, there's no degradation of the surface. Level one, there's slight. Level two, there's more than slight. Level three, or level four, level level three, level four, there's significant damage, right? And so um, it's just kind of a like, you know, it's kind of like buying something used off of Amazon, right? You have something that's in very poor condition, uh, poor condition, you know, okay, good, um, slightly used like new you know you know what I mean it's like that that's what the degree of surface degradation is like and so so you wanna you know kind of create that scale and you know it's a little difficult to quantify that um, you know purely from the from the PCA standards they do attempt to, to do that but it's good for you to just kind of have that um, that shared cognition in your team to where you all understand what does level two look like? What does level three look like? What does level four look like? Right? Where level four, it's the supreme prep where we're reaching a near perfect finish similar to a new surface, right? And if the customer wants that, then they ought to be willing to pay for it. And, and that's a way that you add value to the project. Um, it's also a way that you subtract value, right? And, and so we don't always need to be adding value, adding value, adding cost, adding cost in order for the customer to be happy what what value is it's it's ultimately about finding that balance between price and what the customer is getting and so if they are okay with a level two prep they're not that picky uh, they know that their walls aren't in the greatest shape ever they just want the obvious stuff you know holes and things like that filled then maybe a level two is appropriate but then on the other hand maybe they are higher detail they like the nicer things in life they want their house to look a certain way level three level four maybe they care about those things right and and your job as a salesperson is to pull out what they uh, what they like and appreciate right now on our end when we're bidding this work out it's it's pretty simple each level adds dollars per point so yeah we use the point system and and so you know our painters if they're apprentice they can do usually around one to one and a half points per hour if they are more on the journeyman level they're getting closer to two two and a half if they're a craftsman level they're definitely two and a half and above in terms of how many points they can produce per hour and so what we do is is we add dollars to the uh, you know to the to the point because we know that the crew is going to have to take more time their production rate is actually going to slow down because they have to be more attention to detail right and so they're going to cost you more and so we have to we have to increase that that price right per point and so you know typically um, you know let's let's use a couple of examples here um, let's say that um, you know our base price is going to be you know for basic prep which is you know we can move pretty quickly um, let's say that it's going to be we're going to charge the customer thirty dollars per point on that and if we have you know if our team on average is able to produce two points per hour um, each player on our, our team can uh, 
you know, produce around that, then we're, we're charging an effective bill rate of, of $60 an hour, but probably more than that because we're getting process gains in this, in this uh, regard because all we're doing is painting. And so they're actually going to, you know, if a person is able to produce two points per hour on a level two or level three, then they're going to have a better production rate on um, on level one. They're going to be more at 2.5, 2.75. Um, so they're just going to be able to move faster because of the, the lower prep level. We get to level two, level three, maybe they're kind of stabilizing. This is a this is about on par with what their typical um, production rates are. And so, yeah, we're seeing, you know, maybe this is ultimately ends up being an effective bill rate of, you know, 60, $65 an hour. But then if we're going to level three, now we're now we're jumping it up, right? So now we're, uh, you know, maybe at level two, we're charging $32 a point. Maybe level three, we're closer to 38. Maybe level four, we go closer to 42, 45, somewhere around there. And of course, this is gonna depend on your market because when we're dealing with, with value-based pricing, we take into multiple factors. We take into, into account the, the level of competition and demand. How many people are, are servicing your area? Are they charging, um, uh, you know, are they charging competitive prices or is everybody charging kind of a high rate? Um, do you have low demand? Are there a low supply of painters? Is everybody busy? If everybody's busy, then our point, uh, our dollar per point is going to go up. And so um, you, you just kind of, you know, work in that regards of, of value. People want quality. Uh, they want, you know, urgency f plays a factor. Let's say they have a short turnaround time. Uh, if they have a short turnaround time, I'm sorry, sir, but you're going to have to pay a little bit more. It's called it's called surge pricing. OK, surge pricing. You, you, uh, you might recognize surge pricing if you've ever taken or driven for Uber. Um, you know, go, taking an Uber late, you know, Saturday night downtown where everybody's coming back from the bars, you're going to pay a lot more for that Uber driver than you would on a, on a Tuesday morning. Um, that, that's called surge pricing. And so when you, when you are really busy or your competition is really busy, then the prices go up. This is basic supply and demand economics. Um, and so, so you're going to play around with those levels and, and, you know, I, I, I try to use a rule of thumb, which is that if, if my crew can be busy, um, you know, four to six weeks at a time, if, if there's a backlog of about four to six weeks, you know, that's kind of my target for, for the backlog based on the size of my crew. And if we get busier than that then I feel okay with raising my prices. If I am not booked out four weeks, then I'm going to be incentivized to win more bids. And so my price might lower a little bit. The key is understanding what your break even is, which is probably another video. So, so on these levels, what this allows you to do is it allows you to price adjust based on quality. If quality is a factor, whether it is they want a high quality or they actually want a low quality because some people want a low quality so that they can keep their cost down. The levels, the five levels allow you to price adjust based on their requirements for the work. Level five, I didn't really talk about it's complete restoration. This would be if you are into um, historic restoration work or um, you are you know, renovating a house where um, you basically have to uh, take the drywall down to bare studs um, or, uh, you know, maybe there's maybe if you're doing like lead abatement or things like that, where we're um, using chemical um, strippers to, to remove the paint completely, that would be level five. And, you know, and, and if it's going to be a level five, you have to charge a lot of money for it. And, the, and that customer has to be prepared when I'm presenting the bid to the customer, I'm actually giving them options to. Uh, price adjust on the fly and so it, I might start it off as a level two and say you know this is not gonna you know that's this is not gonna get you the, the Taj Mahal if you have more more room in the budget and you want to upgrade the, the the prep level 
um, or you know of certain rooms that you know the walls are really in bad shape and you want to go with pre level three in that and you think it's going to need level three we can upgrade to level three you might have that conversation when you're on the call and just say okay you know let's let's uh you know downgrade this to, to a level or let's let's uh, start with level three and talk about whether it makes sense to go to level four or if you can live with you know some of the imperfections and, and go down to level two so when I'm when I you know my sales process is I go to the house I take videos we talk about surface surface condition we talk about product options and then I set up a call via video uh, to in, ensuring and, and uh, at least aspiring that that uh, all the decision makers are there and then we have that conversation together about the prep level for each room and I'm totally willing to um, adjust each room in terms of the the prep level because some rooms have more damage than others and so you know the the key is then translating that information to your crew hey look out on this one because the prep level is different in each room so this you know the bedroom one it's a level two but in the living room it's a level three so just make sure that your crew knows that and that your crew leader is um, leading the team and guiding the team based on that right and uh, and that they're they, you know you just you just want to ensure that you're getting a lot of process gains in the process and avoiding process losses uh, process losses would be um, in this case where you are uh, you've got somebody who's who's basically providing a level four finish when the customer is paying for a level two so you so you do have to communicate with your crew and make sure that you are uh, maximizing process gains and uh, eliminating process losses